Well, hello and welcome to the Camel Matrix video cast number six. In this video, we will be discussing the deer walk video that I did on my last um, kind of experimental video. I'll share some new additions that are in the Camel Matrix and also have, that have been in some videos, uh, the Camel Showdowns. We'll share some voting results from you guys who've watched the videos. And we'll go through some of my first impressions on the Ozonix HD 500 uh, that I've been taking out with me on a number of little hunts with, that I've taken already this season. Um, and also go over some viewer submitted uh, photos that I've converted to Deer Vision. So let's go ahead and go to the deer walk video. So it's, it's got a decent number of views initially compared to what my normal releases are, which you know aren't necessarily huge, but it gave us an idea of how deer see us from the ground. And in that specific video, it was kind of a, a morning, morning shoot, and so the sun was behind where I would be uh, seen from the deer, so I was backlit, and so it basically just made every camo pattern just a blob. And in that case, because I was standing on a tree stand, uh, that platform, I was just this dark kind of just tree trunk that stuck out of uh, really nowhere. So um, with that, you know, with that blob effect, you know, you know, let's go ahead, let's take a look at it. I'll go ahead and show, you know, each one of these up here. So I'll throw these, these images up here and you can just see that they all look relatively the same. And even, you know, if you look from the left to the right, um, uh, in this case, the left to the right, the regular camo. So I was wearing scree solace on one side and all the way on the other, you can see me wearing the ghillie suit. There's not really much difference. I mean, you're just seeing that dark figure that's up in the trees. So if you're looking to enhance, you know, how well you're being hidden in uh, in the trees, you know, you could go, you know, with that route. If, let's take a look at <clears throat> the center one. You can see where I'm wearing that blaze orange. And if, and if you look at the blaze orange, it breaks up that that big long human type shape that's up there and, and really I wouldn't even say it's a human shape it kind of looks like you know part you know part of the tree that's just kind of skewed out of you know nowhere but you know if uh, if you were going to you know try to disrupt what your shape looked like it's almost like in that that particular type of setting you know carry an orange vest with you or you know carry one of the old vintage like duck camo blaze orange vests with you and that might give that look as as though it's that foliage that's behind you and some darker spots in there to really break up that that human shape or break up that one that one kind of shaft shape that's up there but I've made a couple of edits with it so that we can replicate some variances of how they may look um, with you know some some movement or some different angles so if we you know single one out you can see that you know you can just really tell that something is up there and and, and something else we have to keep in mind is that you know as a as a deer is walking through the woods you know they're taking in that 300 degrees and so they're really looking for that movement and if it's not something that is too terribly out of place they may not notice you but you know taking a look at that video or that that still in deer vision you can see that you know, something is a little out of place there. But if you know the, the angle the deer is approaching, and this is usually the problem, problem is that the angle that you're being approached is, isn't something that you can predict. And whether or not you're right up against the tree or you're hanging out from the tree, if they're at the right angle, then you're just not gonna look natural. But, you know, let's go ahead and change it to, to where if I was standing closer to the tree or more in line with the tree, it looks like you're part of that tree trunk. Um, and, you know, for those of you guys that are saddle hunting, which I haven't got into yet, um, you may just look like you're a branch off the tree. And you can take a look at this video if I move that image of that hunter around and I make it look like it's someone that's standing on one of those foot platforms and they're, and they're tethered to the tree, then it looks as though it could be a big Y that's in the tree. Um, so it looks like it's something that, you know, you can kind of 
kind of take into, take into consideration uh, is how you are against that tree or how you are around the tree when you are backlit and something is coming at you from that side. You know, I've always been told to put the sun behind me. And if you take that advice, then that's going to be something that you're dealing with. You're going to be dealing with that you are just the silhouette and the camo that you're wearing isn't going to make much difference at all. So, you know, that's kind of our perception on that. Now, for the future, I'm going to be shooting this from the opposite angle. Um, I may actually set up something for this particular shoot so we can kind of do it over and over again with different lighting, different foliage, and that way I don't mess up my own hunting area. But we'll do it with the light behind us, we'll do it with the light in front of us, and we'll do it with the light maybe high in the sky, uh, depending on how, you know, how much time you plan on spending in the tree. And, and also as the foliage changes, so as, as there's less foliage in the tree, then you're going to be more backlit or you're going to stand out a little bit more. Just, and this is just so that we can see how they look. And we'll also do some from the ground, possibly from, you know, like say you set yourself up a brush blind or, or something to where you're sitting there. Um, and I do have a photo that I'll share at the end of me earlier this year wearing the 3D leafy suit on the ground. You'll see how that looks in deer vision. But um, that's, you know, kind of our perception as how you would look from the ground uh, with a backlit uh, sky behind you is you're just going to stand out. So let's go on to some new camo. So new camo in the Camo Matrix and Camo Showdown. Uh, Killick, if you've been watching the videos, Killick added a new pattern. Uh, it's actually from Vail. It's called Vail Summit. Um, it you know looks like it's a strong pattern for multi multiple environments. I like the color variation in it. Um, got some good strong. It's and actually tans rather than whites. Uh, good strong tans in, uh, in the background, and you've got some multi layer of dark uh, greens and browns and some blacks that are in there. Uh, but it's kind of a. I, I would say it. it has a macro, it's a, it's a macro pattern, but it's, it's got some good space variation in it to make it look like it might have some smaller detail in there. So it looks like it's a, it's a good pattern. Um, and then there's Muskeg from Jackfield, which um, they are, I can't remember exactly where they're from. Uh, I'll have a link for these guys and so you can check them out. But there's, uh, it, it looked like it was a pretty good pattern. Um, and We've done some showdowns with them, and you guys have done some com comparisons on them. I, I may have them in here. I might not. Yeah, I do. Um, so we'll actually have some voting that was that was on the uh, the Muskeg and Killick Summit pattern. But uh, but yeah, both of them are in the the Camel Showdown uh, and on the Camel Matrix. So you can go and you can you can on the Matrix you can click. Uh, all the different, all the 120 patterns that are on there. Choose different backgrounds. Put it in Deer Vision and see how it might look in your particular environment. If if I've got one that matches something similar to what you're you're hunting, and I hope I do. If I don't, please let me know what areas I need to add into it to make it give you that same kind of background that you've got. I've I've tried to cover everything, but um, it's it's a big country, uh, and uh, there's a lot of different variations of an environments that are out there. So we'll move on to voting. Uh, I'm going to run through them fairly fast because it's just a bunch of numbers and I'll, and I'll throw these up on the screen for you to be able to just take a glance at them. But uh, for those of you that don't know, I in my community section on uh, my YouTube channel, uh, there is a, a number of polls that are there and they can still be taken. And what I do with every single video is I put a link to the community poll so that you can uh, watch the video and then make your own choice as to what you felt did better overall or whether or not they did equal. And uh, I tally those up and I kind of give you, you know, the rundown of each one of them. There's probably 50 or 60 different polls from all the different camels that I run. I've been doing this for about six months now. So it's probably 50 or 60 different ones. But I'm just going to show you the last one since uh, my last uh, Camel Matrix uh, video cast that I did. So um, True Timber Strata versus Forest 2.0. That was a 62% for Strata, 19% for Forest 2.0, and 19% uh, said that it was an equal showing. 
Um, next was Strata versus Edge. Edge has been doing very well. We've been doing that Edge Marathon. 23% uh, for Strata, 70% for Edge, and 8% said that it was a draw. Now, Approach versus, versus Edge, 21% for uh, Approach, 71% for Edge, again, a strong showing, and 8% said that it was equal. The Mossy Oak uh, Terra Gila versus Edge, um, 8% said Mossy Oak was better, 75% went for Edge, and 17% uh, said that it was a draw. And there was a Cryptek Obscura Transitional versus Edge. This was 37% for Cryptek, 50% for uh, Edge, and 13% said that it was a draw. There was also a uh, Sitka Subalpine versus Killick Summit. 71% uh, of you said that Subalpine was the superior camo. 13% said Killick was superior, and 17% said it was a draw. Then we had the Muskeg uh, by Jackfeld versus Killick Summit, and 15% said Muskeg was superior, 62% said Killick uh, was superior, and 23% said that it was a draw. And we had a Mossy Oak Bottomland versus Realtree Timber. Um, you know, these are some older camos, uh, but if you make the request, I'll put them in there and then I'll let everybody vote, vote on them. 21% went for Mossy Oak Bottomland, 63% for Realtree Timber, and 16% said it was a draw. And then we had Mossy Oak Drop Tine versus Edge. This was 23% Drop Tine, 69% for Edge, and 8% said it was a draw. And, you know, so you can see Edge has been our strong shower in most of these. Uh, it's, it's, Edge has that, appe that look from far away as though it's a good macro pattern, but when you get up close, it has the details of a mimicry pattern. So it's something that is, it's a strong contender to be one of our better camos that are out there. Um, so, uh, you know, take a look at my polls. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Uh, go and vote if you haven't voted on them. And then you know, eventually we'll take all this information and we'll start to make that list of, you know, which one is the ultimate camo. So I want to move on to the Ozonics HD500 that I've been using uh, in a couple of hunts that I've gone on uh, this year and my first impression. Um, if for those of you who don't know, this is a ozone generator or, or somewhat of a scent elimination uh, hunting tool and it's something that you carry in your backpack with you and you take it and you get it to where it's blowing downwind from you so uh, the idea is is that the ozone I guess ions bind with the scent molecules that are coming off of you and they make you somewhat or, or undetectable now uh, as far as you know how heavy it is it weighs just a little over a pound I, I put it on a scale and it weighs just a little over a pound um, it has a mounting screw that goes into it into the tree that you're in um, and uh, and a little bracket that holds it in place and so when I used it and the wind was shifting around me I would move it to point downwind and now some people have talked about uh, the how ozone can be bad for your lungs and you can smell it when the wind shifts and it blows it in your face so whenever that happened I you know I'm not going to sit there and continue to uh, inhale it I'm going to make sure that nothing is around me and then I would go ahead and shift it to where I was making sure that it was blowing downwind from me and that's just going to be the nature of being in a tree and another there's a uh, a very well respected person that uh, I'm in uh, that I've gone hunting with and they've had a couple of these and they said that was probably their biggest issue was you know trying to keep it with the wind as the wind changes and so I probably moved mine uh, during one sit probably four times when I started to smell it hit me rather than be downwind from me and it's it's not a horrible you know smell it's just something that smells a little bit different than what um, uh, what you're used to that's in the air so you know it when it happens but as far as the noise that it produced it's very quiet uh, I've got my mic on and I'll go ahead and 
see if I can turn it on and to see if you can pick it up. And it's on right now, it's running. Um, it's a little bit of a, you can, you can hear a little small fan running, but I don't think that you, it's even picking up and I can't even see it picking up on my mic, so you may not be able to hear it, but I've turned it on for you, and I'll go ahead and turn it off. Um, it does have a number of settings on it. So, as far as effectiveness in my experience, uh, I was busted by a doe uh, while using it. I was facing, I was in a tree, and I was facing downwind. Um, and I'm sorry, I was facing, the wind was blowing in my face, and so I actually had this mount, this is one of the times where I had switched it, I'd had it mounted in the tree over here so I could access it, and so I turned it when the wind was, had shifted in, into the woods, which is where I was facing, but when the wind shifted and I started to pull out of the woods, and, and this usually, if, you, if, you're, if you're unfamiliar with it, usually when the area behind, outside of the woods heats up, as the sun started to heat up the area behind me, cold transfers to hot. So that hot shifted to blow into the open area that was behind me. So I actually turned it and had it running behind me. Well, what I didn't know was that a doe had walked up directly behind me from the, uh, from the field in a tree, and I didn't know that she was there. And I thought I heard something, and I turned, and I turned, and she saw probably the bill of my hat, and she uh, bolted from that, uh, from that moment. So that's one instance where I kind of think that she was approaching me from downwind, so she might have smelled me. Uh, if I didn't have this, I'm, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure. But I've got another story that is, it's not related, it's not, not deer, but uh, my wife had some little thing that she was doing with bees outside and the bees were attracted to something that was around me and I was working outside and I, and I was like I was kind of getting a little irritated because the, everything I was doing the bees were around me and they were buzzing around me so I said you know what go let's go get this uh this ozonics they had they had marked something with their pheromones and so they were all attracted to this spot and it, and it just happened to be the area that I was working in, and so they were just swarming around it. So I took the ozonics and I set it upwind from this area where they were um, kind of swarming around, congregating around. And I turned it on, and within a couple of minutes, every single bee was gone, and there was nothing that was going on around me. And so I was like, well, that's interesting. And so I turned it off, and they all started to come back. So I don't know if it's they didn't like the ozone generated that was off of it or if it dissipated that smell and they could no longer find their way into that location. So it's just something interesting and you know possibly somebody that is more scientific than I am is out there that has seen this um, could chime in and say that, you know they were maybe reacting to the ozone or it did max, mask some of that pheromone smell that they were attracted to and so they didn't know where to go and it was just I just found it interesting that when I turned it on and turned it off that there were different reactions with those bees so it's just something to to consider uh, there's a lot of people that that will uh, swear to it uh, I'm still in my experimental stage so I'm, I'm using it this season but I wanted to say that right now uh, Ozonics is having a sale this uh, it's two hundred dollars two hundred dollars off of this unit um, right now up until the 23rd of October so um, check out the link that they've got if you're if you're curious uh, but $200 off of that right now so now we want to get to viewer submissions and here I've got David in Washington he is wearing Scree Summit and we'll go ahead and convert him to deer vision you can compare from you know uh, one side to the other you can see that you know that red green colorblind filter is applied along with that 2100 vision, uh, so it creates that blur. Uh, and, and actually, you know, down in that bottom section where you don't have the trees, you know, you could have a little bit of uh, shape deception there. So um, we'll go to just another one of his photos. It looks like he was out bugling, 
and uh, just a switch over to deer vision. Definitely those pants and that background are getting somewhat harder to decipher. Uh, obviously he's, you know, if you're skylined up top, that's not really gonna do well with no matter what you're wearing. Um, and then, um, so that's David from Washington. We've got um, Nathan in Delaware. He's, now he said he's taken a bunch of photos of, he was wearing the, the old Advantage timber camo uh, and he said he's taken these pictures about 15 years ago, and he sent in a, a good number of them, and I'm going to do them over time. But, um, you know, it's, it's interesting to see that there's some other crazy people like me that, you know, are kind of obsessed with how camo might look in different environments and, and how they're set up. Uh, but I think he took them in, I believe he said he took them in spring. Let's take a look at how, you know, these might look. Now the first one, no matter what you're looking at, and he's hidden back there, I'll show you kind of where he's at with a little arrow, but uh, converting it to deer vision, that blur, that, uh, that red green color blindness really makes it hard to decipher what's back there. And then uh, he's got another one where he's uh, up against a tree and uh, he's got that, it looks like that spring green up that's happening, but the uniqueness of the tree that he's decided to sit up against would be I mean, uh, just a, su a superior place to set up because the tree is already very odd looking. And so anything that would have walked by that may not notice that. I mean, he, at a glance, if you're not looking directly at him, he looks like he's part of that conglomerate of tree trunks that are there. So, uh, you know, good choice on that, that location to, uh, to be on the ground. Now, here's one of me, and I'll be, I'm wearing the, you saw me in the ghillie, uh, you saw me in the 3D leafy suit. This is me in the 3D leafy suit. I had set myself up um, in an area, uh, and if you take a look at the human vision version of this, I'd set myself up on the ground against a tree uh, and I actually have my little, my bow hanger sitting out in front of me so I can reach up and grab it. But even in human vision, this, the camera that took this picture, I, I had a, a go, I actually had this GoPro here. I have it hung up in a tree facing me and I could trigger it with my phone so I could kind of get myself set up and then I didn't have to move later on. So I got myself set up up against the tree and I, and I hit a couple of shots of it. But converting it to deer vision you know, it is uh, almost undetectable for the most part. You know, so, uh, and this is the leafy suit, but I'm, I'm really submerged, submersing myself in that background or in that, that environment to, to blend in the best that I can. And that's, you know, you're sitting right out in the open, and I was sitting above a, a fairly heavily used deer trail that's, uh, that I found earlier this year, and I kind of got myself in there and uh, was hoping that something would, would walk through. Uh, didn't happen that day. They actually walked about 50 yards to my left um, that particular day. But um, it's just interesting to see how you might look, you know, when you're set up. Rather, you know, you just don't know how you look from the outside. But these are, uh, this is the, now of course this leafy suit is the one that I wore from Hot Shot Gear. Uh, they, uh, I'm going to be using it throughout the year with, along with a number of other things. So um, they are, if you're interested in 3D Leafy or Gilly, they're a good price. You know, give them a, give them a check out and see what, you, see what you think. So I also have some new additions to my camo arsenal, my own arsenal that I can use out there when I'm shooting some of my experimental videos, uh, something like the deer walk in the woods or actually walking through the woods or setting myself up so that you can see how it really looks in um, a, a true environment with true lighting and true shadows. So Scree has sent me the Summit pattern. Uh, I've been wearing the Solace pattern in a lot of the videos that you guys have seen. So this will be featured in a deer walk video um, and also some other experimental videos that we do. So Scree Summit will be one of our additions. Um, then we've got the, this is uh, New View Hunting, and this is their woods, camo woods pattern. 
Um, it's a uh, obviously a macro pattern, uh, some lights uh, and dark greens, blacks in there, so uh, a good shape breakup. So it's uh, this particular pattern is only available in the jacket, so I'll be wearing it and reviewing it later on this year as I get some um, some wear on it. Uh, so we'll do some reviews on this one, but right now no pants in this color, just this particular, just the jacket itself. But something else that New View has sent me in their leaf pattern, which is kind of interesting, this is the, let's see here, this is the hunting suit that's in their camo leaf pattern. So it kind of comes in this little package here, and it was um, vacuum sealed, but I've opened it up since then. But inside there, you have, of course, you've got a, a pretty good face cover in there, in their pattern. You've got, these are the, this is the jacket that's in that pattern. Some gloves and uh, pants. Looks very similar to Edge to me. We'll do a, we'll do a side by side comparison with a full Edge suit and a full uh, New View hunting um, camo leaf suit. But um, that particular suit, so we're talking about pants, jacket, gloves, and uh, your head cover is $199, uh, or I'm sorry, $119 on uh, on newviewhunting.com so uh, I'll have a link to all these guys uh, check them out and um, let's see as far as anything else that you guys are interested in how I might need to shoot some videos to, to help you guys make your own decisions or if you're just curious you know let me know if you want to support the channel buying anything through my affiliate links or just watching the uh, the channel helps me out so as always the best camo is to remain still and be quiet. Thank you.